Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Um, this is another lens um, sharpness test that we're doing. I've always been curious, and I think a lot of you guys out there have also been curious. Could the 7200 2.8 L lens with a Mark III um, 2X extender match up with the quite well known L lens, uh, the 100 to 400 Mark II L. Because um, in effect, you're getting the same focal length, except instead of just buying a standalone lens for 400 millimeters, you're buying um, a 70 to 200 2.8 lens. So this is a USM Mark II L lens, EF 70 to 200. This is the Mark II version, and here we have a two times extender or teleconverter, um, and it's the Mark III version. And I've always wondered can both of these produce the same results? So, without further ado, let's jump on the computer and have a look. Welcome to the studio, we're assessing image quality. So we're putting up the 100 to 400 Mark II EFL lens up against the 70 to 200 Mark II uh, EFL lens with um, a Mark III two times extender. I want to see if image quality on the 100 to 400 is that much better than having the combination, or are you better off using the 100 to 400 because it's just so much better? Clearly, your autofocus on the 100 to 400 is going to be better because you're not having to use that extender. But I've always wondered, can the image quality hold up? So without further ado, let's just zoom in there. The first image is going to be 5.6 at ISO 400. Um, let's go 100% there. And uh, it looks really nice and it just looks sharp. I, I don't see any problems there. Let's have a look at the uh, combination, 100%. It just looks softer and we seem to have a problem here with the uh, circles just seem to be a bit blurred so and obviously we've got a drop in contrast as well so you will need to up your contrast in Photoshop when you use the combination. Um, so let's just have a quick look in the corners see if there's any main major differences at f5.6 uh, so that's the combination and that's the 100 to 400. One thing I will say is the 100 to 400 doesn't seem to be completely 400 millimeters. It does seem to me to be around 370 to 380, not a true 400 mil setup. So that's why it's not as zoomed in as the uh, 70 to 200, because I think we are getting 400 millimeters with that combination. Um, but again, it looks quite sharp and reasonable um, when I'm Looking at the, um, the these boxes here, they just seem a bit softer. And one thing I have noticed, I'll zoom right in there so you can see it at 300%. We've got a magenta tinge. Now, there is a little bit of magenta tinge in the 100 to 400, but it's very mild, hardly noticeable. But you can see it there. You can see it there. And it's quite obvious, chromatic aberration is there, which is colour fringing. Uh, it's not desirable in your images so obviously that's the disadvantage of using the combination so let's have a look at f8 this time um 100 and you can see it's it's sharp i don't see any problems there um and it, it just seem to give us good results let's have a look at the combination at 100 um have we got a improvement in sharpness it's mild but not um, dramatic um, the, the hue softness that we're seeing in these circles has cleared up a little bit which means it's got a little bit better let's see if we've got any more sharpness that's appeared here the chromatic aberration we've seen before has largely gone so when you stop the combination down to f8 we get rid of some of that or the majority of that chromatic aberration i think there's a tiny wee bit there but it's almost barely noticeable um, let's go back to the uh, 100 to 400 F8, see if we've got anything there. 
Um, I, I don't think there's anything there for me to worry about. Um, so let's have a look at F16 then. So F16, 100 to 400. 100% um, looks nice and sharp, no major problems. Um, let's have a look at this pattern here. We're getting some pattern detail there, which looks good. Um, and again, it looks nice and sharp. We are seeing some of the pattern in the box here, but that uh, filter they put on the sensor is obscuring some of it, um, which is just a side effect of having one of those filters on the sensors. This is the EOS um, R6, if you if I haven't already mentioned it. Um, ISO 400, so we're using a remote um, that Canon Connect app on my phone as a, a remote to trigger these. All image um, stabilization is off. Let's see if the uh, combination gets any sharper at F16. Um, 100%. I think we've got a little bit of... Um, Clear, clearing of that softness that I was seeing so it's got a bit better um, I'm not seeing any sort of diffraction affecting the imagery either uh, let's just have a look at this circle again and then compare it to the 100 to 400 see if there's any difference that I can detect I think they're probably as sharp as each other here at f16 I don't think there's any major difference there but certainly at the lower apertures there is a big difference um, in sharpness, um, certainly chromatic aberration is a telltale sign of something being wrong at 5.6 but when you stop it down the, the lens gets better so let's just go over here on the 100 to 400 it just looks sharper all, all around you know and obviously that contrast hit is a big difference so that's my rough assessment of using the combination here um, I think the 100 to 400 is less susceptible to chromatic aberration than the combination is and it is sharper. Um, the downside is you're not getting a true 400mm lens where the combination does give you a true 400mm lens. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think this lens combination is something that's useful? Let's just go up here into the letters and num um, that we can see here. And compare it to the 100 to 400. Again, this is at f16. Just keep that in mind. Um, and just see and compare them with each other. So that's 100 to 400, 200 percent. That's the 70 to 200 combination at 200 percent. Um, at f16, I think they're very close. Um, but at f 5.6 and f8, um, they're not that close. Um, and the sat the um, the contrast is a bit of a, a big deal for me. Uh, we do fit to screen, fit to screen. You know, there's, there's a difference there. It's the same camera, um, same lighting situation, but but you can see there's a big difference between the 100 to 400 and the 70 to 200. Anyway, I hope this video was a bit enlightening. For me, it certainly tells me I was right to get the 100 to 400 and not use the combination um, and obviously your autofocus will take a big hit as well so I um, hope you found that helpful so guys and ladies um, you've just seen the results and I think the biggest takeaway for me is that the, the standalone lens the 100 to 400 Mark II is sharper but it's not giving us um, a, a, a real 400 millimeter lens. I think it's probably closer to 370 to 380 millimeters. While when we put the two times extender on the 70 to 200, it does seem to give me four, uh, 400 millimeters, um, and it does focus internally, and the zoom is focused internally. Um, while on the Canon. In order to zoom out you have to push it out like so uh, the focusing is internally on this zoom lens however there is a possibility and a good uh, a good chance over a period of time the, the zoom is dust into your lens um, with the 7200 it benefits um, with basically it, it actually zooms internally 
which means the lens doesn't extend in and out. So the odds of this getting dust is heavily reduced. Um, and obviously we've got the extender on there and that gives us a readout of 400 millimeters and I do think it's a true 400 millimeter setup with that. So the results speak for themselves. It's up to you to make your mind up um, what you think. Um, but for me, I think we're losing contrast with this combination with the 70 to 200 with the two times ex extender and it doesn't seem to be quite as sharp as the 100 to 400 standalone lens and you know look, you know obviously the results speak for themselves um, so I just want to say a big thank you to everyone for watching have a uh, happy new year and I'll see you in the next video but uh, let me know in the comments what you think do you still use this combination um, or have you moved away from that and gone for um, a standalone lens like the 100 to 400 whether it be the Canon, the Sigma, the Tamron, wh whichever it is um, let me know in the comments um, what you've gone for in the past and have you ever been tempted to get a 7200 and carry a, a two times extender around um, but this is purely a video to assess image quality um, clearly the autofocus and I have tested the autofocus in these two lenses because I've had them for some time and I can tell you that the autofocus speed is quite quite significantly reduced using the two times extender on um, and obviously that reduces your max aperture of 2.8 down to 5.6 um, and obviously the Canon lens um, you know is a 5.6 lens so they're, they're pretty much even Stevens when it comes to the aperture once you start using that extender but then again there is the benefit of having the 7200 where at some point when the light becomes quite dim you can take that off and then you've got a 2.8 aperture 200mm um, lens that you can use from 70mm to 200 um, which will let a lot more light in than, than the standalone lens mm -hmm. so it is a compromise so if you want absolute sharpness at 400 millimeters, clearly this is the lens to go for. However, if you want the versatility of being able to take the extender off and use this um, as a, a wedding lens, as well as occasionally you might see something at co that, that that's, piques your interest, like wildlife or sports, and you can put that extender on and, and take some nice pictures. It's all requirements, I suppose. Um, as a wildlife shooter, I want the absolute sharpness. I, I you could talk, say I'm a, a sharpness junkie, really, because sharpness means every everything to me. However, if if you can, you know, if you're not too bothered about, um, you know, getting things tack sharp, and you can live with a bit of softness in your images, then you know I would suggest keeping this combination around because it can be useful, especially if you're a wedding shooter and you do need a 70 200 2.8 lens um, it gives you a bit of flexibility there anyway let me know in the comments which you would stick with which would you use on a regular basis again these lenses can be adapted on the mirrorless Canon cameras as well as still used on uh, digital SLRs um, I know digital SLRs may be on the way out at the moment um, and people do want to get the new Canon mirrorless cameras, but a lot of you guys out there still are using digital SLRs and you may be tempted to use an extender um, Personally, I'm not a fan of the 2x extenders because they do slow down your autofocus quite a bit um, but at a pinch um, And when the scene doesn't require quick focus sometimes you don't have to have the fastest autofocus in the world to film a scene like you might be at a pond, you know filming some ducks you know, unless it's something that's really fast, um, this should be fine. Um, but obviously in fast environments where things are moving quickly, then you may prefer to have the uh, 100 to 400 Mark II L lens because it has slightly quicker autofocus. Don't get me wrong, it's never going to be as quick as a 500 F4 L lens with their super fast autofocus, um, in, especially in dark situations. But if you need sharpness, I would recommend the 100 to 400. 
but if you can live with a little bit of softness in your image, if you want to use the two times extender, you know, by all means, give that a try. Um, that's just my opinion, can be sub quite subjective, you may agree with it, you may disagree with it, but, you know, let me know in the comments, in a respectful way, please, if you don't mind, um, what would you go for? And thanks for watching, and have a happy new year. Bye-bye.